how many more years of not even getting to the Super Bowl will suffice regarding Sean McDermott? Because uh, we don't know. I mean, the ownership, this is kind of still new to them. So we don't know how they run things as far as being patient. Uh, right now, we know that they haven't been impatient. But then again, McDermott's done a good job. So there's really nothing. So uh, it, it should be interesting to find out. Bills fans, let us know. I mean, what you think about Sean McDermott and how many more seasons of not even getting to a Super Bowl will be okay for you. Um, and I, I would think the younger uh, generation could also be a little bit different from the older generation who went to four straight Super Bowls, even though they lost four straight Super Bowls, but uh, a little bit different taste there. But anyway, we value your opinion nonetheless. All right, looking at Buffalo, and they've really only made one addition on defense the entire offseason. And I'm not, and, and we're looking at really a guy that'll probably start, I don't know, 30, 40% of the snaps on defense, Taylor Rapp. You know, he's probably the only like real uh, noticeable player on, on that side of the ball. Um, offensively, you look at it, and yes, they had Connor McGovern on a guard, but Damian Harris to take over for Singletary is really the big move. So if you look at it, they're really having it's been a kind of quiet offseason so far for Buffalo. So the question with the draft is, what exactly do they need? And I, I really believe, and I, there's a couple other positions we'll go over, but I still, I, I just think it's a no-brainer. I think they need multiple young uh, uh, players around that offensive line. I don't care how they bring those guys in, but that offensive line's got to get a little bit better. Yeah, they they have really patched together an offensive line multiple ways and none of them really being primary assets, primary resources. They haven't used high draft picks on the offensive line. They haven't shelled out a lot of money on the offensive line. And that is a spot economically around the NFL that look around every depth chart. There's at least one premium asset used on that, on the, along the offensive line, at least one, right? Whether it's financial and free agency slash contracts or early draft picks. And for years, I've been saying that I think this is going to be a, the eventual kryptonite of this team. And you could even say year after year, I've been proven wrong there because they've been good enough. But in my opinion, they haven't been good enough to get to the next level, right? Um, you know, both tackle spots, Deion Dawkins, who I liked coming out of college, I thought he would be better at guard. And he has really um, entrenched himself as a left tackle there. Good player on the outside. The question to me is Spencer Brown at right tackle. We have two years of football, a lot of tape, a lot of snaps. Have we seen him got any better since his rookie, since the first snap of his rookie season? Um, he, he allowed over 50 pressures last year. He was among league He might have got worse. Yeah. I mean, I think the league started to figure him out a little bit, right? And if you remember back to his scouting report coming out of Northern Iowa, right, um, was that the tools were dreamy, right? Like, unbelievable athlete. But – He's high-hipped. He struggles with leverage. He's not fluid, right? And that really, I mean, that's the number one, one of the reasons why the number one thing I look for in a tackle coming out of college is how fluid and how natural they look in pass protection. And this is something that I think Buffalo is probably a little worried about on the offensive side. Well, that developmental time, you know, and, and as you mentioned, our lads uh, had – touched up on that in, in their scouting report. We're at that point where, I mean, he played earlier maybe than he should have, which is right. fine. And like you said, maybe once he got out there and there was film on him after the off season, now we know how to target him. Now he takes a step back, but now we find out, okay, now that they've targeted you, now you, the, 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 the developmental part, has to come to, you know, we're at that season where, all right, they, I, I, I've gone out there. I'm trying to do my best to develop up pretty much on the fly. They've come after me. They've given it, give, pretty much given me their best. Now I have got to make that move. It's, it's mm -hmm. 2023 is the season for him to make the move or not. And that's why you wonder whether or not it's prudent to add a right tackle uh, or maybe you had a guy who has the ability to play both inside and out. Cause if you look at it, I don't like Ryan Bates all that much. 
Connor McGovern's okay. You can live with, with Connor McGovern. But and I've said this for the past couple of years, actually, for the past year at least, they should also look to upgrade Mitch Morse. I mean, you could live with Mitch Morse, but the problem is when you have a Mitch Morse who's just kind of like a below average, average at best kind of center, and then you don't surround him with quality players, his game kind of goes down. He's not that type of guy that brings other players up. He's the kind of guy that can actually go down if the guys around him aren't very aren't very good. So that's what's going on there. Um, mm-hmm. And you kind of let off with it. Besides yeah. Deion Dawkins, there isn't really anything else that you have to be afraid of with this offensive line. So I actually wouldn't be surprised if they used two of their top three picks on an offensive lineman. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing this organization, Billy, Be- Billy Bean, has done, right, as a decision maker, as the drafter for this team, right, they draft college tackles and they put them inside. All of their interior guys were college tackles. And, I mean, even the one that they got rid of in Cody Ford, right, like that, they were college yep. tackles yep. that probably were not um, lengthwise or just skill set wise ideal fits for the outside. And that's a move that it's a trend in the NFL now. And, you know, when I do my reports for the tackles, you know, I mean, you know, you have 20, 22 guys that are really draftable grades, and I'd say half of them could project inside. And that's a move that I think Buffalo is going to keep feeding that monster this year, um, hedging what they have inside. And because I think, you know, you can make a case that at least two of these guys are not going to be here next year. You draft a tackle, you give them a year to develop the, the guard, maybe even center skill set. And you have your starting guards slash centers next year. All right. Who, if they decided to go offensive line uh, with, with their first pick? With their first pick, I mean, a guy that I like as a tackle but could project inside, right, in this kind of situation is Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse. Okay. Um, I'm a little rich Local on kid. Him. Yeah, I'm a little rich on him. Not many people yeah. have a first-round grade on him. I'm like borderline first, second. Bills are at the end of the first round. Paris Johnson, I don't think he's going to fall, but this this offensive line group is is shaky. This is going to be a very hard to predict draft, and you are going to see certain guys drop. Do I think Paris Johnson is one of them? No. But what you can get out of Paris Johnson is a guy that the Bills could see, hey, we might want to make an aggressive move for this guy and move up for him. The guy was a former guard at Ohio State, finished his career at left tackle. So you have someone that has some experience inside. And you have uh, someone that already has this inside-out versatility. You know he can do both roles. So if they wanted to get aggressive and get a starting offensive lineman and just figure out where to put him, you could trade up for a pair of shots. And, but, you know, there's, there's a bunch of day two options, too. My top two options for tackles in college to make the move inside are Jalen Duncan from Maryland and Tyler Steen from Alabama. Okay. Um, Skill set wise, their ugly tape in college was a lot in space on the edge, just couldn't hang with the speed. But anything kind of on inside shoulder when they didn't have to go to the outside edge, they they're very stout, very good with their hands, good size, um, great anchors. I think those are two guys to keep an eye on day two for the Bills to implement in that guard. All right, uh, let's talk about some of these other positions. Uh, but by, by the way, I have to ask you, what? Is Deontay Hardy like a special teams demon or something? Because they gave this guy a little bit of a little bit of money for someone that I've never really heard of much, if at all. I mean, he's a Pro Bowl caliber special teamer. He must and, be because yeah, right, and, unless and he, unless they see something in him that I completely don't know because he hasn't done anything as a receiver. Yeah, I mean, I think that they're you know the gun the gunner and also the fact that he knows their system and. The, the special teams, the returnability, right? This was a guy that for a while he was going to be the next big thing. In, oh, okay. In the, was he? When, he? when he was with the Saints, he had, a, he had a few stretches of play when Sean Payton was there. They tried to make him a, a receiver, and it never really worked out. But his, yeah, he, was, uh, he had some decent numbers in his, yeah. what was his first year. Yeah, his first and second year. Yeah, but last year, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he just... Sean Payton left, <laughs> you know, there you go. Um, I, I really think he was a product of Sean Payton. I think he was the one that was pushing that, but I'm actually surprised he didn't end up in Denver because that happens a lot. Like a coach goes to a new team. They kind of bring over their guys, uh, but they lost uh, Isaiah McKenzie. Yep. And I think Hardy's going to be the guy that is going to be a pro bowl potential special teamer. Yeah. That, that's what I figured. I really figured the special teams had to be not that again uh, with the right. You have Josh Allen now. 
Yep. So he might be an interesting sleeper, to tell you the truth, to keep an eye on if you're looking for someone uh, that uh, could maybe – I think he, I think he did have like 500 yards his first year or 21, mm-hmm. and maybe that's what you're looking at because – that's why I brought it up because I wondered whether or not they need some extra depth at receiver. But in reality, they really don't. They don't use the depth much unless there's an injury or two. Right. Um, so I think an inline blocker, though, on tight end would definitely uh, be something that they could use uh, defensively. I don't know where that. Where do you think Bernard fits best? Because they used a third round draft pick on him. I don't know if that was either insurance in case they couldn't resign Milano or. They expect Bernard to play, maybe to take over um, for Tremaine Edmonds. Mm. Uh, I know we don't have that on the depth chart right now. Right. That's why I'm asking, because with Milano there, you don't use up a third-round draft pick unless you're going to play the guy. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, I don't get too into NFL comparisons, but I do get asked a lot. If I see something stand out measurement, skill set-wise, I'll put it in there. I'll even put it in the report sometimes. And the name that I had next to Bernard was Matt Milano. Uh, Just the style of play, the size, the speed. I mean, you're talking next level speed. Um, But, I mean, my first question I want answered with Buffalo is, what are they doing at a defensive coordinator? I mean, Leslie Frazier is taking the year off from football. And I know it's McDermott's defense. But who really is in charge of the defense or who at least is under McDermott that's in charge of the defense? And that might, you know, alter what they're doing next to Milano. Now, they lost Edmonds to Chicago. Yes, big loss. And, yes, they saw it coming. Uh, and they knew this was coming last year. So I believe Bernard's selection was the hedge here. Okay. That if he sh- if he's not ready, they have a couple other decent options. But I think it's the number one need. And the, the, the need specifically that they need that will replace Edmonds is coverage. Right? Milano's the guy. Milano is the guy in that group. He's all over the place. He aligns up everywhere. Um, he's their best blitzer, the best pass rusher, the best run defender. Edmonds was just the freak. And they, you can't replace that size. I mean, Edmonds was one of the biggest ever linebackers to ever come out of college football and actually play off the ball. And you're not going to just replace that in the draft. There is no one like that in the yeah. draft. There's probably no. So I think they're going to have to shift some philosophy things. With, with that role, they're going to take out Edmonds. No one's going to replace him. And I think Bernard's going to get the first crack at it. Yeah. But, you know, he's not proven yet. And I, and I think until you have a, a proven player there, and I th- even think you're going to have to find another backup because Milano's been in the league. This will be his seventh or eighth year. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think you need a hedge there. Well, uh, our lads, actually, the scouting report on Bernard um, may be scheme dependent as he projects as a will playing yeah. behind a three technique. Yep. So right there. And that's the spot. Yeah. That's the spot. Yep. So, um, all right. And then also, again, I, to me, I think early on, it'll be a decision between one of two. Either they go with the offensive line, which I think is a definite, or, yeah. hey, you know what? The guy that we want isn't there. Let's just do what we just always seem to do, which I am completely okay with because I don't think that it's worked the way that they've hoped that it would work. And that is draft another edge rusher. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what Rousseau is yet. And, you know, we knew he was a a multi-year project, but, you know, Von Miller's not going to be around much longer. Epinesa, eh, right? Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. I think the entire defensive front is, it's, it's, that needs to be in the discussion for the first pick too. Um, You know, Ed Oliver, free agent next year, he went backwards from 2021 to 2022. He's always been kind of this risky shot in the dark. You know, that was a swing. That's what I call. That's what I mean by a swing for the fence. I use that term a lot uh, with with projecting rookies to the next level and prospects in this class, last class. Right. And Ed Oliver was a swing for the fence that did not work out. You know, it was interesting. And this just shows you why you never talk about. comparisons of the draft too early you have to wait four or five years before you could go hey how did that work out and what i'm talking right. about is the difference between the jets drafting quinn and williams or ed yeah. oliver yep. because they're, the first year or two there are a lot of people that were going oh the jets you see they should have drafted oliver oliver was the better player Hasn't turned out that yeah. way. Seems like the yeah. Jets made the right call. So you don't, Absolutely. you got to just hold reserve on how yeah. certain players develop. 
And but again, Oliver's been a nice player, but he hasn't lived up to where he was drafted yet. And you know they, their entire defensive line. I mean, Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, Daquan Jones. That entire, that foursome. They're all free agents next year. And Buffalo is a point. team that they don't necessarily always draft for this year. They're always looking to the future. So um, I think a all four of those guys are replaceable, and b they're all gone next year. And this is one of the things Buffalo is about to experience. You start paying a quarterback what you're paying Josh Allen, yep. it's going to be harder to build this roster. You don't get as much margin for error. And I'm not going to say Ed Oliver was an error, but no. you could make the case that he was in that when you draft someone high in the first round, if they don't make it to a second contract with you, then, you know, it was a short-term rental. Yeah. And, you know, that that's something that needs to be thought about with this team moving forward is they're, they're in trouble along the defensive line, inside and outside, especially if Rousseau does not take a step up. Yeah, or Boogie Basham. Yeah. Which yep, so far Boogie he Basham hasn't. Has yep. Absolutely, both those guys. Yeah, so Russo is the guy that really needs to take off this year. Yeah. They really need him to have his breakout because we saw when Von Miller went down, pass rush disappeared. Disappeared, yep. and, and that's, that's, that's a huge red flag for a team that is going to get to a lot of shootouts. All right, so uh, other than that, Elam, they're expecting to take over uh, at, at right corner opposite White. Hopefully White will stay healthy. If White stays healthy and Elam develops, they're in good shape. And keep in mind, Poyer and Hyde are getting a little older. That's why I like the move to add uh, Taylor Rapp. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think they're, they're in pretty good shape, at least for this year, uh, in, the, in the backfield. 